show your support, like, share and subscribe. Hello, I am that British guy and welcome back to my PlayStation Plus reviews for the PlayStation 4 games. And in this video I will be concentrating on XCOM 2. Now, if you saw my other video for Trials Fusion, which was just very ranty and negative, you will be pleased to know that this is very much the polar opposite. I have really, really enjoyed playing this game and am really looking forward to talking about it with you. So let's start right away. Now this, obviously as the game suggests, is a sequel. Um, I haven't played the first one. I'm not particularly aware of the events of the first one. But it seems like the game kind of assumes that. There are uh, very obvious kind of um, mentions of what happened 20 years ago in the game's timeline, which I'm presuming were the events of the first game. And the fact that at that time the Earth was kind of invaded by some weird alien overlord characters who, at least in this game, and I presume were in the previous game, referred to as the Elders. Now, 20 years on, there has been the creation of this organisation known as Advent, which is kind of run by these alien Elders, um, with kind of the help of sympathetic humans that have basically kind of bent over and decided to align themselves with them, presumably for their own personal gain and survival. And at the very beginning of the game, sort of almost in a tutorial level, you are tasked with recovering something called the package. And it turns out that that package is you. It's really weird the way it makes more sense in the game, but you rescue this person who is known as the commander and then from there on like all the cutscenes and everything where they're talking to the commander they're talking right at the camera as if like it's in first person view mode and you are the commander but it's odd that the the kind of style doesn't change from the beginning when technically you were still asleep it's <clears throat> it makes more sense in the game put it that way anyway once the commander has been sort of revived, um, you are in this warship effectively, which is your base for the game. And you are tasked with sort of collecting resources to build up this um, ship and uh, undergo things like research. Really typical kind of strategy game um additives shall we say rather than just um, the sort of the levels <coughs> that you play that you would sort of play in a normal action game you just get level after level after level this kind of gives you downtime in your own base to kind of build up your recruits and research certain things and build the base up how you see fit now obviously the meat of the game is the levels themselves um, in the vast majority of them you're kind of given through cutscene and radio communications an objective to kind of go to a certain part of the world um, and basically neutralise any alien threat that is there and potentially collect intel or save um, people that are in peril there, things like that, or just drive them away from a certain area. And you start off with four people, and this can be expanded to five and then six people, and they fight within um, what is essentially four different classes for you. Uh, they start off as a rookie, where they're basically unable to do any kind of special extra uh, skills of any kind, but once they progress from that initial rookie level, they can be classified as um, a ranger, and they come with uh, a blade so that they can perform, uh, they can kind of break out of cover and perform uh, sort of these extra um, attacks with this blade. There is also your kind of tech guy, technician, 
who comes with this drone and they are able to kind of hack into things remotely for you or even heal certain members of your group. Um, there is the sharpshooter, makes sense, they're equipped with um, a sniper rifle and then a pistol just in case you get a bit too close to the enemy and um, that class kind of speaks for itself and you also have the grenadier who has what is essentially kind of a small mini gun and also a grenade launcher for they're basically your kind of heavy weapons experts and you are able to train other rookies either in the field or back at the base in these four classes and kind of build up a team as to how your gameplay is really, what your kind of personal style is, how you like playing, whether you have a couple of one class or you go all out on another class or you sort of have half sharpshooters and then one each of, of the others once you've got six it's kind of up to you how you do that and you start off with quite a few extra rookies as well just in case any of your characters do die in the field which is perfectly possible for that to happen um, you are also able to recruit extra people as and when you need them as long as you've got the necessary resources to do so now the gameplay itself is kind of RPG strategy action, so each level is kind of mapped out into different squares and you are able to move up to two times or once if you move over a particularly long distance, um, but you can move twice within these sort of squares and the idea is to move within positions so that you can attack these alien creatures and take them out of the level and as I say collect any intel that's there or rescue people depending on the level that there is. The levels themselves are kind of strewn with various bits and pieces for cover um, so that when you do finally break out of what they call concealment at the very beginning of the game where you kind of show your hand to the enemy or when you're spotted by the enemy um, you're able at least in part to kind of put up a bit of a fight and you don't get completely annihilated and obviously the AI tries to make sure that the uh, the opposing team is doing the same just to kind of obviously add that level of difficulty to it. These sorts of levels kind of last around I'd say 10-15ish minutes a time so they're not too big um, but you kind of have to, although you do get the initial tutorial at the beginning kind of telling you all the different menus for moving characters and selecting targets for um, attack, things like that, you kind of have to learn on the fly. It's very much down to you to work out what your best strategy is for how you play, especially based on the types of characters that you want to build up within your unit, because it is perfectly possible that you have, once you've unlocked them, six sharpshooters, and you can kind of position them in various places to kind of um, flank the enemy and attack from distance, and then if they try and move away from you, they might move into the firing line of um, your other sharpshooters that are kind of the opposite side of the map. That is one way I guess you could play it. Or you could completely balance your team out so that you have um, a grenadier and a sharpshooter and a ranger and what whatever you need basically. On the field as well as taking these people out you can also collect a few extra bits and pieces. These will help you with your research. They will also give you extra things like um, sight scopes or um, bigger magazines things like that um, just to kind of uh, build up your your players basically uh, build up your squad just to as obviously the game uh, increases in difficulty it just gives you those extra bits and pieces to make your team a bit stronger the main sort of overworld map on the bridge shows kind of a digital representation of, at least for me at the moment, North America. Um, but it is implied that these aliens are worldwide and presumably once you go further in the game you're having to move your mothership to various different uh, areas on the planet. 
and from there you're kind of tasked with making contact with other resistance groups to try and bring them under your banner. Um, they will then kind of supply you um, with people or resources, things like that, or even intel, and that potentially unlocks extra uh, missions for you to accomplish. Um, you are also tasked with kind of breaking into these uh, black sites and taking the enemy on uh, sort of first hand. And as I said, when you're not doing this, you can return to your mothership and sort of concentrate your effort on um, research and uh, training up any of your rookies that you may have or building up your base. Now, these certain things that you do on the uh, the sort of the world map, if you like, on the bridge, take a certain amount of days to complete, and this part is uh, within the game. And while that's happening, uh, certain people are training within that time frame because usually it takes a few days for that to happen. And that's how time then progresses within the game. It doesn't seem to be that it progresses when you go on a mission and come back. That doesn't seem to take up time, but you could spend a good sort of three days scanning a particular area to try and find the local resistance group and within that three days you will have accomplished some research or something like that and then you can kind of go back to your research team and get them to research a few more bits or, or use that to um, if they've researched a, an item you can then take that to your engineers and get them to build those items so that you're ready to take them into the field. So all in all, there are lots of things to consider. It's not just the the kind of action based um, levels that that you're taken to, which is uh, very much a turn based system. As I said at the beginning, it was kind of an RPG action uh, idea. Um, it's not just that. You've also got to consider the the sort of the strategy of what your base is and the importance of that when you go on these missions and, and why it's there just to make things as easy as possible for you when you do end up um, on these missions now speaking of easy um, I did initially start this game on sort of the normal mode I suppose it said that it would be okay for players that have played this game before and it's usually okay with kind of strategy games so I thought well that sort of sounds like me I'll give that a go and I got absolutely <laughs> annihilated every single time there are then further um, difficulty levels beyond that that the game kind of warns you against trying those unless you really know what you're doing so I did actually have to play, the, in order to get enough gameplay from this, I had to start it on its easiest setting, which the game does actually suggest that you do. Um, so unless you are particularly well versed in these sorts of games, or you have an extensive knowledge of the first one, then maybe take that approach as well, just so that you don't get so frustrated with this you um, you don't bother continuing with it and I kind of was at that point but because of the cutscenes that there are and the story was really engaging to begin with um, everything is fully voice acted um, it, it got me really invested and interested in the story so I wanted to sort of start everything again from the beginning and just see how that developed as I went through the levels Admittedly, the first couple were a little bit too easy, but it has got to a point now where it's it's competitive enough, but also challenging and achievable. Um, so I'm quite pleased that I've gone down that route and look forward to sort of playing the game more um, in the following sort of weeks and months. And with that, that would be an ideal time to go to buy, try or fly. On PlayStation Store at the moment, we can see this game is usually priced at $44.99. Now that is the basic version of the game. There is also um, a digital deluxe version of the game, which is $57.99, which comes with a few sort of extra starter packs for your engineers and scientists and things like that. There is also the Ultimate um, Edition, I think it's called the Deluxe Edition, and that is $79.99. That comes with a few more of those packs and two, two DLC, I think it was. Um, so it's possible to pay £80 for this game. 
Obviously the version I was playing was just the basic version of the game, priced at 45 And purely because of that price bracket, this has to be a try. It could not be a buy at that price because I just don't know if there's enough in there to warrant a sort of full AAA sort of value um, to this game. It still feels a little bit indie purely because it's kind of turn-based strategy. The, the voice acting in some places is a bit cheesy and although it does look quite nice there are elements to it especially in the levels where it can be a bit cartoony so I don't know kind of how much of their focus really went on the kind of the graphical fidelity of things um, so it's difficult for me to say yeah you could realistically you could go out and pay £45 for this game and be really pleased you did some people might be, but I think the vast majority of people out there, it would be safer to try this now while you've got a couple of weeks, while it's free, and see if you do like it. It might then be possible to kind of upgrade your version if you really do so wish to get those extra packs and get those DLC, depending on how um, cost effective that is for you. Um, maybe if this game was kind of £25 or you came across it in a sale or you got a second hand copy of it potentially then it might be worth purchasing for around the 25 mark but I think at, at 45 it's a little bit too much to be honest. So yes, they were my thoughts on XCOM 2. As I say, after the Trials Fusion video, I don't like just ragging on a game, but that game kind of deserved it. So it was really nice to positively talk about a game again. One again that I will be looking forward to playing in the, the coming weeks and months, as I said before. This won't just be a, yeah, I've tried it for the review, it was alright, maybe I'll come back to it when I've kind of run out of things to play. I think I will be kind of actively playing this um, as kind of one of my secondary games um, for, as I say, the for, for the foreseeable future. Easy for me to say. Just a reminder for any of those of you that have been watching my retro gameplay, um, that has now come to an end with Metal Gear 2, and I'm currently in the process of selecting a new game out of Gran Turismo, Micro Machines V3, and Formula 197. So if you've got any preference on which one of those three games you want me to play through next, please let me know, either on Twitter, Facebook, or by dropping me a comment in any of my YouTube videos. Um, I will obviously be back next month with the PlayStation 4 um, free games then as well. But until then, I have been that British guy and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.